A. Palumbo here with Palumbo's Pythons and Boas for another installment of Muscle Serpents University. You guys have been asking me about the olive pythons that I have. Everyone loves olive pythons. Here's a beautiful albino male olive python that I have. Um, I actually, I have a female. I'm going to show you in a little bit. She's a 2010, so she's about six or seven years old now. And I've been trying to breed her for the last couple of years. I had, I found out something the hard way, however. Uh, if the male is not close in size to the female, the female might eat the male. And I had a female kill one of my uh, head albinos, males, in the past. And so what I did was I, I, got, a, I got another one, luckily, from uh, Jeff Hartwig, who is a friend of mine now. And I got this male, and I got a, a het albino olive python male as well. And I've been growing them up for the past two years. Uh, the head albino is, is bigger than this one is because he's a little older. And so I decided, okay, this is the year. I'm going to test it out. I'm going to see if I can put, them with the, put her, him with the female and hopefully breed them because this is the goal. The goal this year is I want olive python babies, and I want albino olive python babies because there's not that many people who have done it, and I think they're awesome, super cool snakes. I mean, look at this guy. I mean, that, that's about as close to a dinosaur as you're going to get. And I think he's about to go and shed, as you can see, because you can't even see his red eyes. They're all cloudied over. So he's behaving pretty good. This, this guy is a really, really tame guy. Some of these olive pythons, especially the females, are a little unpredictable. You get them out, you might get a bite in the hand. Uh, you never know with them. They have really long teeth because these things can, can eat birds and you gotta get through those feathers. So you really don't wanna get bitten by these. But this guy is, is super tame and super cool. And like I said, he'll probably shed in the next day or so. Um, but I wanted to take something out so that I can hold him. So here's the strategy. So I contacted Troy over at K Brothers Pythons in Australia because I know they're great olive python breeders there. And I said, you know, I'm going to go to the best, and I'm going to ask Troy what to do. And I told Troy about the female I had and that she killed a male uh, a couple years back, and that every time I seem to put a male with her, she wants to attack it and, and, and kill it. And, and I didn't know what to do. And he said, Dave, this is what we do with the trouble females. And I was glad, actually, he was able to answer my question, because a lot of the people I did talk to in the United States said, well, I never had a problem like that, or I don't know. And he said, it happens. These snakes tend to like to eat other snakes, and uh, especially when they're not the same size. He said, number one, make sure you bring your male up to about the same size as the female, which we did this year. He said, secondly, what I want you to do is don't feed the female for at least four weeks before you introduce the male. And I said, why is that? I th wouldn't that make her hungrier? He said, nope. He goes, once they, get, they forget the taste of food, so to speak, it's kind of like... Um, they, they lose the aggressive feeding response. And I said, okay, I'll try it. I said, look, this guy is experienced, I'm not. It sounds counterintuitive, but you know, sometimes you, you have to listen to people that have experience. So I, 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 didn't, I actually went an extra two weeks. I didn't feed her for six weeks. And I, the other day I put the male in, my head albino, olive python male with the female, and I watched them for a good 20 minutes. And then I said, okay, you know what? No one's attacking anyone. They're not really interacting with each other, but no one's attacking. I said, that's a good sign. And I left them together. And they've been together for about two days now. We're going to go over there and take a look, and we're going to peek into the cage and see what we can see. And obviously now is the time where I'm not feeding any of the snakes, any of these olive pythons in here at all, and I'm going to let them breed for the next six weeks. I've lowered the temperatures in the room, not as low as I probably would have liked, but they're low enough that they were lower before. I dropped their night temperatures from about, nine, from about 88 to about you know, 80. It goes down to maybe 78 at night. So they really don't even have a, a temperature. Here's, here's our female. I'm going to take a little quick peek. We don't want to disturb her too much. And if you look deep in there, I don't know if we have enough light, you can see our male head albino in the back. Once again, they're not interacting with each other, but what they are doing is they aren't killing each other. And I think that's an important point. We don't want to see them attacking. Now I have to let nature you know, do its thing. Now we're, lo we're losing, <laughs> we're losing our male here. I don't know where he's going, but he's, he's not, he's, he's trying to get away. He's trying to get away. I'm going to let him go. Okay. Let's see where he goes. Anyway, the point is you have to be patient. Now we have to let nature take its course. If it's meant to be that these snakes are going to breed, then I'm going to have some great all pythons for sale <laughs> at the end of 2018 or maybe the middle of 2018. I know they have a long incubation period, but let's hope that I got them up to the right size, I did the right preparations beforehand, the cool temperatures now, the non-feeding, let's hope that that stimulates the female to produce follicles, hopefully the male will copulate with her, put that sperm in there, and then we'll see an ovulation in a few months, 
and hopefully get some eggs. And that's really, you know, all you can do. Logan, what's going on right now is that's the Hulk snake, right? The, uh, that's the head albino male. Ew. And that's Captain America. Uh. The head, that's the full albino male. So we have the two males in with each other and they're doing a little bit of combat. Now, I don't know what the best way to film this is. My son is watching this. We're teaching him how the snakes play. Now the two males are going to combat for our big girl in the back there, Xena. Oh, oh, no, we're getting a little aggressiveness now. Now I got to break them up. We thought that there was, uh, I did see some almost biting. There was definitely a little biting, but they let go. They're definitely, a, but they're wrestling very aggressively, right Logan? Yep. Very aggressive wrestling here. I hope this will inspire one of them to breed that female <laughs> in the back. I've been going with the head albino male, but I'm open to either one of them doing it. But I'll, I'll let the head albino male, uh, our Hulk snake as my son likes to call him, try it out. I think I'm going to pull that other male out in a second. You know, there's got to be a good, little bit of good luck. So the guy up there has got to be watching over you. And what I always say is make an informed decision. I try to educate myself as much as possible. Everyone has their own little techniques. I put them in a big cage. That's another big thing that, that Troy had told me to. Don't put them in a small cage, which I was doing before. This is a nice six foot vision, 632 cage. I don't know what else to do at this point. I'm just going to pray, like I said, I'm going to keep you guys updated because I know everyone's really interested in the olive pythons and hopefully, like I said, at the end of the year we'll have some fun babies to show off and uh, hopefully if you're interested in buying them, they're a super cool snake. It's one of my favorite uh, pythons actually out there. Uh, at first I really wasn't so into them, but I, not only do I like the albinos, which are my favorites, but the regular olives themselves are awesome. So I'm going to, if I breed, this breeding is successful, we'll have 50% albinos, we'll have 50% head albinos. So the, the head's going to look completely like normal olives, but they'll carry that albino gene. So both will be available, and I think that you'll be able to pick, you know, have your pick of the litter, essentially. Dave Palumbo with another installment of Muscle Serpents University for Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Guys, if you like these videos, please hit subscribe below. Give me your ideas, and we'll keep them coming.